Good evening, wrestling fans. Welcome to another exclusive interview on Evolution of Pro Wrestling. As you can see, I have my partner here with my co-host, Jaden. Hi, guys. Uh, we're about to present to you the uh, founder and director of Smart Mark Radio, gentleman that has been helping us uh, with audio in SoundCloud and Google, who was partnering up with us, myself, my wife, and my son. We're going to welcome in Moses Marquez. And we're just waiting for him to come into the video. Sorry, bear with me one moment, guys. Let's see if we can get Mr. Marquez in here. He can't go live. Mr. Marquez, I know you're watching. Where are you, sir? All right. Sorry for the delay, guys. Excuse me. Apologize for that, guys. We're having a little technical difficulties here. Thank you, Tigre. Appreciate it. We appreciate that comment, sir. Thanks for the support. Okay, oh, there he is. Let's invite him in. And we're adding him now. Here we go. There we go. Yes. Welcome. What's going on, guys? Sorry about all that. I'm new to the that's video. Right, that's right. We have a little tech here and there. Even the best of us have it. Happens. They just had him. Yeah, we will. We will get okay, I assure you, time we're gonna have a problem. All right, there we are. There we are. How you doing, right. sir? A pleasure to meet you. So, How you doing, man? No, it's good to have you on the show, man. We were uh, we were doing we were stressed for time. We were really planning it, and then we finally uh, were able to do it. Well, with somebody as busy as yourself, with all the interviews you had going on during WrestleMania weekend, dude, like squeezing me in was like on the bottom of the barrel. So no, no, I, I, you know what I mean. All the interviews I listened to, dude, they're way more important than who I am, which is good. Because the people need to hear you, man. That's why when I got when I had the opportunity to talk to you and we discussed this whole thing, and I figured the worst you can say is no, giving you an audio platform to to hopefully connect easier with everybody. And so far, it's been working out, at least from what the numbers say. You have definitely impacted the numbers, as you know, people care about numbers. No, and I and I appreciate that, you know, and I couldn't have done it without. You know, my son is the co-host, my wife, who is also the producer and director, who comes up with these ideas, all these topics as well. You know, we see the work. We like your work, you know, the Smart Mark Radio, you know, the I stuff we talk that. about, all the stuff that is mentioned in WWE, the rest of the stuff, you know what I mean? And when me and my wife saw the request for you to be for us to partner up, you know, we thought about it as a great idea. You know, you guys, you have a lot of people that listen to Smart Park Radio, listen to SoundCloud, and, you know, just us putting that out there, you know, you putting that out there, it's, it's helping both sides, you know what I mean? And really? we see the promos you do. We see the promos we hear other guys do. 
you know. <laughs> and tomorrow for the show, you know, I do have a uh, different guest tomorrow for the show, but I know a lot of you did see the superstar shakeup. You know, that was a very interesting superstar shakeup. And I know I'm going to put a lot of, we're going to put a lot of input on that tomorrow yeah. as to why we think those moves for the brand of Raw and SmackDown were beneficial for some and maybe not for some others. You know what I mean? And Agreed. 100% agreed. Yeah, so we were all, actually, I just put a post up. We're having another interview on Saturday with a gentleman by the name of Darnell. He goes by the name, uh, aka the Apocalypse, and is uh, pretty well known in Illinois. And he really, uh, the talent. And we're also going to have one next week, which I'm going to announce uh, as well again on Wednesday. Eric Jalen, he is New York City, uh, one of the Deadly Saiyan squad. He's the LAW heavyweight champion, so he's definitely going to be on the show as well. Love that faction, by the way. Never heard yeah. of them until you mentioned them. Immediately Googled them. Fell in love with New York indie wrestling. Trying to get more on the map, but that's why I go to you. Because you, you, yeah. you know you know all the all the happenings of New York indie, and it's a hotter, it's a hotter scene than people want to give it credit. No, no, definitely. And and New York New York Indie so they they make things real, you know, like it, like the hate. They make the hate look real. So that that's what's exciting. Real. Not to say uh, Florida out here, they have great indie shows. Don't get me wrong. Like I've been to a few of them, and excuse me, I have uh, we have interviewed most of the half of that talent in uh, Florida, which is one that we're going to in May, May tenth. That is go is called Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling. Yeah, that is. it's hey, I dig it's that. A new face of extreme. That the promoter, Evil Genius, um, well, let me not say Evil Genius, because he is the Evil Genius. Um, <laughs> Alex Red, he's very, very smart guy. Very excellent promoter. He he likes what he does. He's very proud of what he does. And as well as Frank Goodman, that hosts his USA Pro Wrestling, that we're going to go to in June 29th, which we're interviewing. And another talent, um, the tag team partner of Danny Moff. Oh, uh, Sean Donovan oh, yeah. of Sent to Slaughter. Nice. So that's going to be a good one. But tell us about your uh, about your show. What made you become a part of the podcast? Oh, what made me become a podcaster? Well, for I'm sure this is like half the story you've you've heard hundreds of years. I've been a wrestling fan since I was a kid. It it legit just it sparks one day. I can still remember the moment it happened. Um, for those of you old enough to know, back in the day, our consoles did not have to be in an HDMI port or some <laughs> crazy input channel. Yeah, the Nintendo's and channels. Sega's and all that stuff. Exactly. So my Super Nintendo at the time was set at channel three. Well, ESPN's three, and for some reason, I don't know what happened. Channel, I think I went for the volume, hit the channel button. USA's channel two out here in San Diego. And I still remember six years old, probably nine something o'clock at night. I see a very dark, mysterious figure being so, uh, surrounded by a sea of fans, mind you, in this arena, walking his way to this ring. And I'm like, I it was immediately captivated. It was The Undertaker. I have ever, for ever since, been obsessed <laughs> with The Undertaker. He is the reason I became a wrestling fan. He's the reason why I love pro wrestling. I've actually gone back to see him as uh, as Big Red, you know, mean Mark, mean Mark Calloway back in his NWA days. But um, the, I've also been told that I have uh, like a certain like voice. I'm very direct. I'm very in your face. I'm very blunt, to put it lightly. And as a wrestling fan, I like what I like, and I don't like what I don't like. And I've I've come to realize that a lot of people e understand what I like, and they're either on the same page with me, or they just love to hear me rant. So when I did that, I was like, okay, well, let's start recording this. Let's make this happen. Um, truth be told, it started out as a as a like a passion project. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, whatever. And something sparked in me one day I had I was working with some I was working with a gentleman and he decided life was more important than podcasting and you know what that's that's totally fine 
But when you do what you love, you mm -hmm. make it an important part of your week. You make it an important part of your month. You make it an important part of your everyday life. I have everyday conversations with my wife and have to convince my kids to go to bed early so I can sit down <laughs> in the kitchen. But it's because I love what I do. Like last yeah. night, I was up until 12 editing. Had to be up early at 5 o'clock, be at work at 6.30, like, it, like an adult. But I, I do what I love. It's a passion. And, like, wrestling is for everybody. It really is. It can legitimately be for everybody. It could be for somebody as young as Jaden or even younger, for as old as somebody like ourselves or as even as old as our parents. Wrestling is it's an art form, and it can be loved and appreciated. You have the old-style wrestling, like WCCW. You know, old school style characters, guys that brought you in by their acts. And then you had real extreme in your face wrestling like ECW. You had the attitude era, which, you know, broke some rules, bent some, you know, bent some corners, did, did, did their own thing. And then now you have today's style where it is 95% in the ring. If you can't see but that's, in that ring, see, that's but that's the thing, though, that I think that's the problem with wrestling now, you know, as far as WWE is concerned and AEW, that in the end promotion, they're allowed to use that character. You know, they bring out that character from from uh, within. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's pretty much what a lot of indie promotion, promotions do and promoters do. So, you know, just go with it. Bring out that character. Let the fans enjoy it. Let the fans see what you're about, you know, not, okay, let's write this down and be scripted and, okay, you're going to do this this way, you're gonna do this that way, like, yeah, WWE is getting interesting, you know, but the show last week, we had women's wrestling and managers, you know, and I know that caught a lot of controversy last week, but it's the way it is, you know, unfortunately, in some organizations, women are taking over professional wrestling. You know, As they should. Have you seen some of the work these women do? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Even in indie promotions, that I've seen women fighting that most of their matches are better than the guys. I've seen the WWE that the first Royal Rumble they had uh, that Oscar won. That I enjoyed it more than the men's Royal Rumble. That's and then great. WrestleMania, Evolution of uh, first women's pay per view. Evolution you know, was actually one of the better cards of the whole year from WWE. Exactly. That's my point. And that's what I'm saying that it's because that character is coming out of these women and they're allowed to be themselves. And that should what, what should happen more in professional wrestling. Yeah. You know, Agreed. We, we're liking the indie now because it shows, okay, these guys are doing, uh, fighting for what they want, their blood, sweat, tears, and just putting their own. And that's what we like to see. Well, yeah, I mean, every, I think a lot of people like to see that. And, you know what I mean? It shows that you want that you want it, that you want to be at the top. You're willing to do a show for 50 people at a high school gym. You're willing to work in the boys and girls club. You're willing to do this in a parking lot. You're willing to drive three, 400 miles for a $50 check. And, but, but you got your 20 minute spotlight that mm -hmm. 50, 60, 70 people saw you. They're going to follow you on Instagram. They're going to follow you on Twitter, Facebook. They're going to be a part of you. Like, Prime example, I'm a huge fan of Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara is one of these guys that he's just recently signed with AEW. A lot of people didn't know who Sammy was. I caught him at a PWG show. Now, the thing about PWG uh, that some people do know and some people don't know is they're all wrestling all the time. The story isn't exactly all about the story. It's about the in-ring work. It's about going out there and getting it done. And Sammy is one of those guys where he he puts it all on the table each and every time he does it, but he has a character. He has a persona. He's very rude in your face, very, oh, I'm a millennial, so I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, exactly. You know, that character. I'm, I'm sorry, not, not to cut you off, Moses. Your, I believe your camera froze for a second. Uh-oh. Let's see if we can fix that here. Again, this is what I this is what I don't know about audio stuff. Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's, there we go. Okay. And, and and not to cut you off again, I'm sorry. We just got a comment um from David Marquez. 
my brother. Yes, what like that. if there's something bigger coming and women are part of its distraction? I don't think that's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, we saw, uh, for the first time in history of WrestleMania, women main events in WrestleMania. You know what I mean? And, and, well, let me, hold, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, um, with the women, the women main eventing WrestleMania, other than Kofi Kingston's main event, you know, his, his historic title win, is was there any other match on that entire card that deserved a main event closing spot? Uh, in your God's honest opinion, in the three minutes we had from Lesnar, would you want to see that close the show? The, no, the, I like it. I, I explicitly Kofi thing. Because it's I'm glad Brock Lesnar is not a WWE. I'm glad he's not champion anymore because he was. I'm sorry, it's just yesterday's news. He didn't really do but nothing. It, it, it was, <laughs> Brock hasn't done anything Kingston. for years. No, of course, exactly. <laughs> Kofi Kingston and, and Daniel Bryan was was one of the best matches in there yeah. overall. Was, but I've agreed. It was like uh, it was it was a good card, but again, the woman stole the show. You know what I mean? And by far, Ronda Rousey is the best female heel ever. Yeah. Agreed. Like that attitude that she's had, everything that's coming out of her, like this hatred towards the fans, hatred towards Becky Lynch and everybody else. And we, me and my son have mentioned it in the show, we would love to see a Ronda Rousey heel turn and it happened. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. You know, so that's pretty much what needs needs to go down. They get the WWE has to look for what the fans want, what these people want. Yeah. You know, look, go back to basics, go back to where the attitude ever was. They want to talk about this PG. Okay, I understand kids are watching, but you know, we gotta go for broke. You know, just go for go with it. Like, don't be so afraid of what channels are gonna say or, or sponsors are gonna say. Like, yeah, you're gonna break the. But if but the thing is is like you're you're talking about how right now they want to walk on eggshells. They want to make sure that they don't upset anybody. They don't want to make nobody mad. Don't leave us. We need your money. But yeah. how much more money were they making in 1999? Oh, how much man. more money were they making in 2000? They were making ten making times more than money because yeah. of the because of the attitude era and the Monday Night Wars. That's what made the competition so unique and so classic because that's when all these stars were built up of The Rock, Edge, Stone Cold, The Hardy Boys, The Undertaker, Kane, you know, all these stars coming up and they still had WCW, still had Hulk Hogan and the NWO and my well, man, all these old guys and while, we, while WWE is build, building up a product. You know, they made was about was about new and fresh. Was about mm -hmm. was about different from old. WCW was the best attempt at NWA staying alive. Mm -hmm. But when you get in an Eric Bischoff, you get in a Vince Russo, things go down the toilet because they think ratings is what matters. When that, mm -hmm. that entire that entire arena, every single week, all they wanted was quality wrestling. Quality promos and a a legitimate wrestling show. Instead, mm -hmm. they got twenty minutes of wrestling on a two night show, on a two hour show, and uh, an hour plus of just mayhem and nonsense. And that's why people left. That's why people went to WWE. But now that this mayhem and nonsense has been tamed, everybody's like, "Oh well, it's 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 because it's PG." Look, you continue to give great in ring work. Give a little bit more moves, you know what I mean. Stop, hold, let it, you know, let it. If they want to go out there a little more, let them go out there a little more. Do their thing. The promos, please, for the love of God, from a man who's been watching most of NWA from '85 to current, or I mean, till you know, till '91 uh, when they went down. If you couldn't make a pro, if you couldn't cut a promo, you were not a main eventer. They did not yes, write I, for you. They did not. They did That's not give you a guideline. You went out there, you had a motive, and you could either cut a promo or you couldn't cut a promo. See, that's the thing, though, that there's no there, there's no more promos in wrestling. You don't see promos on TV anymore. No, it's you, you hear lines. Like, 
the promos back then, I, I used to love them. But one one promo I can think of was when Mankind had a rat in his hand and he's all by himself cutting a promo. Mm -hmm. You know, that's type, that's the type of promo that they needed at the time. It's like now, you know, yes, we still watch wrestling, we still watch WWE, we still watch the news, but I think they can do better and get more talent. Like the talent they got now coming up, I'm actually liking it. Ricochet, Alistair Black, you know, the Viking. The Viking experience, uh, I didn't really like yeah, that. I'm gonna stop you right there because I can't use that name I'm like, and or on video or and even on audio. I refuse to use that name. That is the yeah. worst. That is the second to worst name I have ever heard a tag team ever given. How like how could you not just stick with the War Raiders? I understand War Machine. I understand why they got rid of the War Machine name when they went to WWE. For those of you who know MMA fighter with issues, I'm not going to get into it. Yeah. What's what's wrong with War Raiders? What's wrong with the Berserkers? That was a rumored tag team name for them. The Viking Express. So that means, I mean, the Viking Experience. So you're going to tell me when Velveteen comes out, he's going to be the Velveteen Experience? Because you're not going to keep the Velveteen Dream because apparently it's not good enough. Yeah, pretty much. It's over like nobody's business. No, it's and it, and it's like a lot of name changes are happening. Even Ali, uh, I still don't get that. Yeah, What's so yeah. wrong with Mustafa? What's wrong with Mustafa? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mustafa Ali, I should have just stood there. Same thing Sound, with uh, Sound, uh, Andrade. Another one. I can somewhat. I kind of like that that name, Andrade. That's. I would. It's kind of catchy. When he first came in, because I've been watching Andrade or El um El Soberano since he was uh, back in um, New Japan as the – he's a former IWGP Intercontinental Champion, a belt that Danny Moff actually was in a tournament to be the first – the crown with, by the way, which I've seen that match where he lost to Toriano. Um, but it's – you know, he was – God, I totally lost my train of thought there. But it's mm – -hmm. I totally lost what I was going with. But the whole the, the point I think I'm trying to make is is just – Things need like things need to change. Like we've discussed the things that have changed. Look at all the guys that you just claim that you really enjoyed. How many of them are like WWE bred guys? Almost none of them. A Daniel Bryan is not WWE bred. He was bred on the Indies. AJ Styles on the Indies. Ricochet on the Indies. Alistair Black, formerly Tom End, on the Indies. All oh, the War, War Raiders. Again, I'm not calling it what we said. War Raiders. You know, it's, it's, this is this is not WWE product. Allow them to cut similar promos that they did on the indies, and you get more attention. The attention is in when you talk. That's what we're these guys like. And, and, and Jaden, I have no idea how old you are, so I apologize for putting you in the bracket. But people like kids like Jaden age. When you see a guy talking, you think he's the main guy. You think he's a main eventer. And when you don't talk, who, well, who are you? I don't know who you are. You right. know, you've got to give these guys an opportunity to talk. If they make sense, great. How many Mankind promos made sense? Minimum. How many Cactus Jack promos made sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not about making sense. It's about garnering that attention. You would see him sitting in his corner one minute, he's fine. He's telling you how he feels. The next minute, he snaps and he's freaking out. And you think, what's going on? This is real. That's what we're missing in wrestling. It's the realism. No, Real. absolutely. That That's what we want to see. You know what I mean? We're definitely going to see that. And hopefully, it will come to a point where they realize when it's time to step it up a little bit. You know, hi, honey. I'm sorry. I didn't pick up your phone call. My wife was calling me. Still <laughs> now as we speak. So. She understands. We apologize. Yeah. So, but um, we're definitely going to. We're definitely, we're definitely going to. Looking forward to doing more work with you. And again, it's been a pleasure having you on here, sir. Hey, I appreciate and, it. Really. 
tune into something special that you're not going to want to miss uh, in a couple of minutes. By the way, before before that happens, I already know what you're going to do, and that's fantastic. But I want to plug what's about to go down because everybody needs to be ready for what's about to go down. For those of you who do listen to my show, Smart Mark Radio, we have a bunch of different shows. You got Mo and the Dead Man, The Gorilla Position, Retro Rewind. On the latest episode of Mo and the Dead Man, which was last night, my man Paul Morales and I went over the retro, uh, not the, uh, sorry, went over the shake -up. But at the end, of the day, we discussed an opening in an RWT Max Wrestling Interactive competition going on, promo competition. My man, Emir Black Man Costello, has now been released from his unable to perform promo gimmick, and he's being entered into this tournament. That invites a tenth person. And with that, I petitioned to have you take that tenth spot. So now I'm going to be talking. You can find all my talking at soundcloud.com forward slash radio. I'm going to let you do your talking, and I want to do their talking. Go to Dave, Dave the Kill him. Go to your cell and tell him, put him in the Thank you. I appreciate your time, my man. I can't wait. Yes, sir. So we will definitely be adding more of Evolution of Pro Wrestling to the SoundCloud station. Keep your eyes out for that. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, sir. Have a great night, man. You too. There, there you have it, fans. Uh, exclusive interview with Moses Marquez. Excellent mind, excellent podcast. Tune in tomorrow for Puzo from New York City. Have a good night, fans.